Ooh, that sound over here. I see, like, it looks like the tip of a vortex. Maybe that's the well. Ooh. Some crockery. Nice. Well wind turbulence. The repentant devil is the only one left standing. Oh yeah, that's the well. Something ghastly. That's a, I think that's the first time I've encountered something ghastly. I wonder how that compares to a horror. It sounds worse. It's certainly rarer. I'm scared. <laughs> Holy shit, I do not want to even get near that. Um, incautious driver, how close do you want me to get? We've already spoken, right? Yeah, give me the wheel, Captain. Have an appointment to keep. Go to the well. Okay. Just go to the well. Assume something will pop up when we get there. Duh. Oh, it's pulling me in. Oh, oh, oh. I don't want to get so far into this thing that I can't escape. <laughs> This thing's much stronger than the peacock wind. It's not a wind, it's a vortex. Flickering fires in the night signify the onset of candle wind. Your cook treble bolts the galley door. There's a spinster in the well vortex thing? I'm not gonna fight you there. Come out. If you can. Even here I'm being spun a little bit. Like I'm not moving at all, it's, it's doing all that. Well, wind turbulence. The princess's luggage concusses the quartermaster. Experience or try to get bronze wood. Bronze wood is worth a lot. Let's do that. Success, good. An importunate moaning keeps you awake all night. The howl of the candle wind or a groaning of a crewman's stomach. Is that why it's called the candle wind? Because these little, like, little things of light going through? Wait, candle wind. Is the candle wind separate from the vortex around that thing? Because the vortex looks like it's a circle. I assume around the well. This one, like, it's coming from over here. I'm gonna go check over here. What is that? Something round and papery about the size of an umbrella stand hangs in the sky. What is that? Can I? Ex There's obviously something to that center. Can I do some retrieve? A curator's egg. Wait, a curator. A curator. Isn't that the like? Wasn't that like Mr. Penny? Aren't they a curator? One of your crew dons their thermal sky suit and steps out into the cold. After a few minutes, they return, clutching an object that looks uncomfortably like a large wasp nest. Reckon it's a curator's egg, they say, carefully handing it to you. It looks delicate, but has a heft to it, as if something dense is nestled beneath all the papery outer layers. Um. Well, I guess we'll take it on board. Why do I feel like bad things are going to happen with this thing on board? Someone in a busy port is sure to want to buy it. Is that the only thing I can do with it? Sell it? One of your people swaddles the egg in a grease-stained blanket and wedges it into your hold. Sitting among crates and barrels, it looks more fragile than it did before. 
Eggs can be sold at St. Dominic's Station in London, Wolfesy Station in New Winchester, and King's Idol in Pan. Pan? What's Pan? Yeah. Okay, all the things broke, and I don't think we took any damage from that. No, kind of bonked our head against him. So this is how curators grow? Fascinating. Beige and papery like a wasp nest, with the size and weight of an overindulged lapdog. <laughs> is it your imagination, or does it feel as though there's warmth coming from it? Uh-oh. Oh my god. I don't know if I want to join this party. Uh... Oh no, no. Okay, well, I think the spinster's gone. It can probably fight against the wind if it really wants to. Try to gain crew, looking for survivors, or loot the hold. Uh, let's search for survivors. Guaranteed to work. You explore corridors whose walls and ceilings are dabbed with unfamiliar constellations. At last, you find a cabin barricaded from within. It holds a crewman who seems lucid. He begs to join your crew. Your own crew aren't sure. What if the star madness seizes him? Take him on board at the cost of terror or no? I, hmm, I don't want to risk it. Maybe they hate me so much that they would just try to sabotage the ship, you know? I mean, if they're crew, they could easily sabotage the ship. If they're just in there servicing the engine and shoveling coal in there and whatever. No. Uh, drop him off at the next port. In the meantime, he'll be confined to quarters. Lost Terror. He looks disappointed, but agrees. The crew are happier with him locked away and are cheered by being able to perform this act of sensibly cautious charity. Come on, stokers, throw some more coal in the firebox! Broken stonework drifts by, impossible in its intricacies. I just realized how bad of an idea it is to send the bat out in this wind. Man, you got good wings, bat. More of these damn sigils. Hello. Search for survivors again? Yeah, okay, we'll do the same thing. Drop them off. Wow, that's really reducing my terror by a lot. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing marked on the map at these edges, but I do want to just see them, just to see what's here. Like, is there a source of this candle wind? Where is it actually coming from? Seemingly nowhere and everywhere. Yes. Experience or bronzewood? Um, bronzewood. Failure. 
We don't lose anybody though. Just splinters of wood. 90 sovereigns worth. Shall I level up now? Hmm. Let's do it later. Oh my god, there's so many freaking chips here. Uh. I need to stop fighting him and just get into the damn well before I run out of stuff. Yeah, no more fighting after these two. Good job ramming. Those things ram themselves to death all the time. Scavenge for parts to gain a hole. Yes. Gain 10. Alright, to the well. Come on. Success. Got some more bronze wood. Okay, oh, uh, uh. oh my god, I'm scared. Oh, oh, what is that? Like, I feel like if I go into it, I'm just dead. I'm fucking dead. I'm gonna go around it. Jesus. This thing's a force of nature. There's so many ships around here, are they all just trapped in it? <laughs> Did I see lightning? There's lightning in the center. Fuck off, fuck off, fuck off. Oh, let's see what happens to it. Is it gonna, like, explode or what? Yeah, you charge into the center of that thing. Have fun. God, what do I do? Go into it? I guess. I can't think of what else to do. I need to do something for the incautious driver. It's... Oh, I just saw an approach. Um, yeah, yeah, here we go. I meant to loot, but this is fine. Approaching Old Tom's Well. Below, beneath the scudding clouds, a speckle of structures cling to a shelf of ice. The well winds drag at your engine like the frantic clutch of a drowning man. The well gapes. Descend or depart. The winds howl. You'll need a steady hand at the helm. You will land but risk damaging your hull. Well, I'm guaranteed to do it, actually. I can actually land in the center of this damn thing? I'm scared. Um. Descend. A descent. Down through the tearing mists, through the whipped particulates that thunder on your hull, through the shrieking winds which fall abruptly still, a ledge of black ice has accreted over centuries at the well's edge with a raised lip that affords a sliver of shelter. A handful of beehive huts huddle around a crude church. They're built from roughly chopped blocks of the same black ice that forms the shelf around the wall. Huts made from black ice? Beehive huts? Old Tom was a prospector during the promised days that followed London's arrival in the heavens. For years, he combed the reach, looking for the strike that would make him rich. He didn't find it. Luckless and impoverished, he made a wish here at the well. The next month, he discovered the mother of mountains and the rich hour veins that riddled her flanks. For a year before his disappearance, he was staggeringly wealthy. 
Others come here now, the desperate and the broken, with their final futile wishes. Oh, there's a lot we can do. Depart, take a sample of the ice, explore the beehive things. Um, enter the, the kirk? Is that the church? I'm not sure what a kirk is. Or escort the incautious driver to the well. That's why we're here, but I want to do all of this. Let's uh, take a sample of the black eyes first. The phlegmatic researcher in the Elenus Nature Reserve had better pay well for this, or at least he'd better learn something interesting. Not even the ice of Old Tom's well can withstand the teeth of a strong saw. You cut through it easily, until you've a solid block of ice with which to present the researcher. Yeah, before I do anything with the incautious driver, I want to just like get the feel for this place. What is going on here? Let's explore the beehive hovels. They serve as temporary homes to those who have come to make a wish at the well. Oh. So, the beehive hovels are for people? They're, they're what? They're made by bees for people? Barnacles clinging to the edge. The sky churns as you make your way to the pitiful domes, and most are empty, awaiting a well-wisher. But the third one is not. It contains a corpse, stiff as an icicle, some supplicant who died before their wish was granted. You move on. In the fifth dwelling, you find a sallow petitioner, her eyes feverish. I saw cold in the well, she croaks unprompted, glistering in the deeps. Let's enter the kirk. Actually, let me look up. What's a kirk? Uh, define Kirk. Scottish, Northern English, a church. Yeah, it's just another name for a church. The Church of Scotland, as distinct from the Church of England or from the Episcopal Church in Scotland. Yeah. So, that definitely is the church. A simple leaning tower. And nave constructed from black, unmortared ice bricks. A voice can be heard within. Across the ice. The ice crunches underfoot, kicking your boots with a pitchy crust. There's no door on the church. What? So, there's no way in? There's no door on the church. Inside pews are carved from the ice. Wait, how did I get inside? Inside, pews are carved from the ice. A ragged handful of supplicants sit on them, bitten by the bone-bleak cold. On the altar, a single precious candle burns. A lank minister reads from a dog-eared scrap of paper. As he clothed himself with cursing like as with his garment, so let it come into his bowels like water and like oil into his bones. Wait, what? As he clothed himself with cursing? Like, as with his garment. I, I don't understand. Enact the right of wrongs. I can't do that, but... Uh, we'll read that later. Let's speak to the Link Minister. Her cheekbones are sharp as flint axe heads. Her skin is pocked by the cold. Her gaze is judgmental. Once, her dress was elaborate and fair. Now the hems are frayed. Much of the lace has stiffened with frost and snapped off. Her hair is tied in a greasy bun. Well? Oh, we can do a lot. Um, let's ask about their holy text. What is that pitiful scrap of paper? It looks like a bill or a promissory note that has passed through too many hands and should have been cashed long ago. The Cursing Palm. Psalm? That's pronounced Psalm, isn't it? Yeah. The Cursing Psalm. Her congregation raised their hands. Each has their own leaf of paper, a single page torn from the Bible. The only page that matters, the Judas Psalm, contains the only lesson that we need to hear, the promise that those who wronged us can be made to suffer. Are you okay? The only lesson we need to hear, the promise that those who wronged us can be made to suffer. 
It sounds like they're just spending their days obsessed with revenge. Ask about her denomination. What branch of the church does she represent? <laughs> Probably none. The ignorant call us the cursing church, but we are the compassed who dwell on the brinks. We are the lambs who are torn by the wolf, we're the undone, and the angel of the pit hears us where it would not hear others. The cursing church. I'm guessing they don't mean cursing in the sense of like, fuck you kind of cursing, but more like putting a curse on somebody, the people who wronged them. Ask about their rights. Um. Yeah, a uh, blessing would not go amiss, probably. Undeserving. They're not for the unconfirmed. If you want to partake of our rights, you must join our congregation. And if you want to join our congregation, you must convince me you're one of us. A confession. Only then would you be permitted to take part in the right of wrongs. I just realized how good that name is. The Right of Wrongs. <laughs> I don't know if I really want to do this. Offer a confession. Do I have a confession to offer? We're not concerned with crimes you may have committed or temptations you wrestle with, the minister mutters. This is a confession of weakness. You're here because you were wronged, because you bear a grievance you cannot forgive. You are here to ask for all God's vengeance on someone. So tell me, who is to blame? <laughs> so the only thing I can do, using my moment of inspiration, spin a tale of injustice. Perhaps your grievances are invented. Perhaps they're complex and need to be translated into more compelling terms to meet the minister's flinty standards. I don't know if I want to do that make shit up to get a blessing that I don't know if I want for some reason that seems dubious? I, no. No, thank you. Let's actually look at what this does. The right of wrongs. You may only be subject to one well right at a time. This one increases your iron at a cost of your hearts and mirrors. Hmm. Well, the hearts can't go any lower, I don't think. Can they go below one? Mirrors, I want to keep where it is. So it sounds like it's not necessarily just a good thing when it comes to stats, but just like a trade-off. Let's leave. I, I don't want any part of that. Escort the incautious driver to the well. The fungal sentience colonizing their mind has led them here. But why? The driver driven. The incautious driver strides to the very lip of the well and leans precariously out to stare into the depths. The well winds pluck at them. You grab a handful of their coat just in case. Can you see them, comrade? Glimmering in the dark? The bones of the sun. The driver looks back at you, their eyes suddenly as green as old emeralds. A messenger came, inscribed with signs of peace, but it bore a well seed, murder beneath the arches of heaven. The driver's balance shifts. They lurch, and you pull them back onto the gritty ice. When they look up, their eyes have returned to their customary blue. Thank you. My head's feeling very crowded. But uh, the impulse has changed now. I need to return to the nature reserve. Its home is there, or... Its parents? Its master? I'm uh, not sure. I don't speak fungus. Fascinating. Okay, let's just read this again. Looking down the well, can you see them, comrade, glimmering in the dark, the bones of the sun? Yeah, we know the inside of even dead suns still glow. We know that from Faith's End and all the gashes in it and the sunlight coming through. So that's the fungus talking when it says, A messenger came inscribed with signs of peace, but it bore a well seed. 
murder beneath the arches of heaven. So a messenger, which was ostensibly coming with sigils of peace, words of peace, some sort of a treaty or something, was sort of a Trojan horse for a well seed. I'm not exactly sure what a well is. Like, what exactly is this? Where exactly does it go? I don't know, but it sounds like this well seed was planted by the messenger, and it killed the sun and sucked it into it. So the messengers wanted to kill the suns, or at least a messenger wanted to kill the suns. You know, I don't know how uh, in agreement all the messengers are. I have no idea. We know that the messengers and the suns have had interactions before that weren't violent. Like, remember the, um, the obelisk that was driven into the circus place? Remember what we read about that? How they conversed, and the obelisk was like a, um, it was an obelisk of peace, basically. It's like a mark of their treaty, their agreement. What are the messengers? What are they? And why would they want to kill a son? This is fascinating. Let's depart. You use steaming water from the boiler to melt away the ice that clings to the windows. Then you depart, your locomotive heaving as the winds try to drive you into the well's yawning mouth. God, that looks so cool. I'm looking down the well for the, the bones of the sun. I don't see it, but, like, I'm not going to get much closer. Oh, those must be the, uh, oh, those must be the beehive hovels there. Those little, well, hovel things. And maybe that's the church? The kirk? This, this terror here, or horror rather, is so much more pleasant than old Tom's well. Alright, well, I'll meet you back at the nature reserve. Oh, hold on. Scavenge for parts. Almost got all our hold back. I think there's a treasure up here, yeah. One supply. Ooh, uh, let's do some experimenting with these bees. Maybe they don't like light. I'm gonna turn off my light. So let's do some testing. Um, unfortunately, I'm being pulled by the peacock wind, I think. They're not angry at me. Light doesn't seem to make them angry at me either. Even getting close to them, really close, doesn't make them angry. Okay, let's try the smoke thing. So I'm gonna like turn around and try to smoke them. Uh, hmm. It's gonna be a little bit difficult when I'm being pulled. There we go. Yep, yeah, that's a bunch of smoke on them. No, they don't seem to care. I don't understand why that one... The one or two, actually, group of bees got angry at me. I don't get it. They don't care about light. Oh, God. Well, at least this is super fast. Ugh. When you go full speed into the wind, it really, uh, gets a bit hectic. Ooh, is that one of the dreadnoughts?
Oh, wrong way. <laughs> Alright, there's a lot going on here. Uh. Oh, I hope I didn't just accidentally shoot the bees. There's so much going on here, my god. Try to gain crew, gain random treasures. Let's loot the hold this time. A bulging sack. 40 sovereigns. Newly minted coins fall with a heavy thud from the upended sack. Bright imperial sovereigns. Her renewed majesty's many faces glare up at you. Oh yeah, we're gonna take out that damn dreadnought. Remember I need the nameplates or whatever? To give to, uh, I don't remember their name, but they're that person who has a grudge to bear against, um, the Windward Company slash London at Lustrum. It's like Jane or something? Scavenging for parts, now we're back to Max Hole. Oh, you got a bee problem? Sucks to be you. Think the bees might be attacking me now? I'm not sure. They might have just gotten pushed into me. I want to see them destroy the Dreadnought. Come on, bees, you can do it. Alright, I'll help you out. Oh yeah, I think... Did they attack me? Whoa. Did they attack each other? Like, they bumped into me, but I don't think they actually did any damage there. Um, unlicensed chart. Yeah, let's get one of those. I have a charred stovepipe nameplate. Ha ha ha. Try to recover their nectar. Partial success. At least we didn't lose anybody. The bees were less efficient and you garner only a single cupful of the precious nectar. It'll probably fetch a few sovereigns in port. 27 sovereigns. Alright, we have a lot of terror to try to get rid of. Let's join another hunting party, explore. Down to 46. I think that might be the only thing we can do here, actually, that... Oh, sweet! More Ministry Approved Literature. I need that desperately. Um, I think that might be the only thing we can do here to reduce our terror, actually. Like, conversing, that doesn't do anything. Research. Oh, right, I can turn in research. That won't reduce terror, probably, but... Let's do it. Oh, right, we have two things. Hand in the pen of a scribe spinster. You took it from her dead hands. You're thanked for your efforts and asked to wait while the company sorts out your rewards. Might be a couple of days. The phlegmatic researcher asks you to visit. You find him hunched over the pen, frowning. These damn things are a puzzle. They drip with ink when the spinsters hold them, but once the pens are out of their hands, they dry up. I've dissected a spinster and can tell you they're not flying ink pots. So the ink only comes out when the spinsters hold them, but they don't actually have ink inside of their bodies. Weird. 400 sovereigns, that's pretty good. And let's turn in a sample of ice. It's a miracle nothing of yours froze off when you gathered this. You're thanked for your efforts, as to wait, yup, yup, yup. Um, I cannot make it melt, he says, stirring the black ice in his glass. It's not of water, whatever it is. Tasting it does not make one... Uh, tasting it does make one a tad melancholic, though. Wait, you drank it? Ooh.
I wonder what happens once we've helped with all their research. And the whole nature reserve thing. Oh, this is where we need to do a uh, thing with the incautious driver. Can I take a walk into the reserve alone? I think you can't. Nope, must wait till a guide is available. Let's follow the incautious driver into the reserve. The verdancy in their head drives them deep into the wilderness. Reunion. Deep in the wilderness stands a mighty tree, shriveled and dry. A fungal growth twists around it, its blooms flecked with purple and black. The incautious driver approaches it, lying down in supplication. The verdant pulses, its buds splitting open and erupting in a spore fall that soon coats the driver in shimmering emerald dust. For several minutes, silence. When the driver emerges, their face is crestfallen. It wasn't enough. What I brought it was only half the story. It needs more. You escort them back to the train. They should be more coherent after a good meal and a few hours sleep. The driver needs time to process what just happened. Fair enough. <laughs> I would need time too. So I guess it's not leaving because it needs more. It wanted to see the well for some reason and it wants to see more things. Let's go ahead and level up now. So I'm going to do a scandal. You are the gossip of London salons and the target of blistering editorials in the Gazette. Mad, they said. Bad, they said. Dangerous to know. What was the incident that exposed you to the buffeting winds of public opinion? And I'm going to say a parade of debauchery. Absinthe. Wantonness. More absinthe. Brawling, gambling, blasphemy, and slander. Absinthe and prisoner's honey. Prisoner's honey alone. Prisoner's honey in company. <laughs> Is there a vice you haven't explored? It's possible. There's only so many hours in the day. And I'm going to go with this because, well, here's what I wrote in the uh, little character sheet I have for Elizabeth. 30 years on the frontier is a long time. I wasn't very wise in my younger years. The papers wrote about how I was a traitor to London, wasting their gift of years. Exaggerations. I only wasted a few years. So, basically there's 30 years that Elizabeth got as a gift to uh, help pave the way for the Queen and for London when we went to the skies for the first time. Those 30 years, a lot of them were spent exploring, but a few of them, yeah, a bit of debauchery. Again, they exaggerated. I mean, not all of these, not that much absinthe, but... <laughs> uh, they weren't entirely wrong, what they wrote about Elizabeth. And dangerous to know, certainly, who would want to know the person who wasted the Queen's years, and especially, they didn't just waste the Queen's years, but Elizabeth also wrote, uh, made art, published art about how London and the Queen and everything that they stood for was terrible. Basically a traitor to London, no one would want to know you if they wanted to have a life in or around London anyway. And that also gives us a bit of heart back. So now we've got eight heart in total. Oh, we almost have 50 mirrors. Do you know what that means? When we get 50 mirrors, we can, we can uh, take a new scout with us. I forgot the name of the scout, but that amazing little critter that I can't wait to have, but I need 50 mirrors. Okay. Well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do.